Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon, even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Devin Chulik about creating and maintaining company culture through play. Devin Chulik, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it is a pleasure to be with you today. I am super excited to be talking about play and gaming. We're going to be talking about the way, the ways that we can create and maintain company culture through play. And that's really what your company is all about. As we get started, I wanted to share Devin's bio with everybody. Devin Chulik has dedicated the last 15 years of his career to building communities and building innovative e-commerce products and experiences. As a founder of former Hate Street Gallery and print shop DSF, he helped organize monthly art walks, activated plans to beautify the neighborhood, and served as the president of the Lower Hate Merchant Neighborhood Association. In the world of e-commerce, he has worked on product teams for brands such as Chubby's, Everlane, and Dolls Kill. He continues to consult for a number of SMBs and VCs, and in 2020, he co-founded Start Playing, a Y Combinator-backed startup that connects gamers and aims to dismantle the gatekeeping commonly associated with the community. He has worked as a creator in the gaming and art space and has been featured by publications such as Bloomberg or Marketplace, SFGate, WGN News, and many others. It's a pleasure to have you, Devin. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background? No, that was before we dive in. That was uh, that was plenty. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I, I remembered some things I forgot about myself. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. You have a tremendous background. And I like the community aspects of your background, uh, coupled with your corporate experiences. I think all of that's fantastic. So why don't yeah. we start by talking about gaming and specifically as we talk about play and gaming, describe for us what type, what, what does that look like at Start Playing? Um, what types of activities in gaming and play are you involved with and do you work with organizations on? Yeah, so, um, I mean, we're we're a gaming company, right? So that's the first thing about Start Playing is, you know, uh, playfulness and, and playing is, is part of, you know, every aspect. I mean, um, in how we, you know, we're playful in how we name our, you know, CX team. We're playful in how we name a lot of our internal documents, um, but the whole goal of our company is to get people um, in these communities through play and we build communities through play and it's really impactful when you hear that. And so we do the same thing with our, with our teams. Um, I w- you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, we actually get together quite often just to play games as a team um, and using our own product together too. Uh, you know, our product is like the Airbnb of gaming uh, for, for tabletop. So we use it to book games with each other as a group um, to remind ourselves that like, this is, you know, th- these are the communities we're building and this is like, you know, how impactful it is. So tell me more about tabletop gaming, kind of that mentality, that approach, as opposed to say other types of gaming people may be thinking about as they're listening. Yeah, that's great. You know, a lot of times when we think gaming, we think mobile games, video games, things like that. And then when people hear tabletop, they, they kind of think board games, but tabletop is, you know, tabletop role-playing games are things like Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu. And there's a reason why these games not only are so sticky um, and why people like they're so infectious and the hobby is so rabid is because I want you and and everyone that's listening to this to think about when do you use your imagination, 
right? We use our imagination for problem solving at work or we're probably reading something, right? Um, and so very rarely do we use our imagination for, for leisure time anymore. Now think about when you use your imagination with other contemporaries, you know, when was the last time you were with a bunch of your friends and you all use your imagination together? I can't, it's, it's so hard to think about uh, something that we do as adults where we use our imagination with our, with our friends and we just don't do it. And that's one of the things that is very um, uh, part of, of tabletop gaming. And so when you get the chance to sit down with others and you use your imagination together and you're telling a collective story, there's nothing qu- uh, else quite like it. And so I always see people the first time they play, something happens. There's like a, a switch that kind of flips and they're like, oh my gosh, this is, this is fantastic. There, Cause there's no other pastime like it. Well, and maybe that speaks to really my next question. And that is, you know, there, this market for tabletop gaming generally, and not even connected with the workspace in any, in the workplace in any way, but the market for a tabletop gaming is growing so quickly and the popularity is increasing. You know, you have all these Euro games, for example, you, you and you mentioned Dungeons and Dragons and others such games you have shows like net you know netflix stranger things which is repopularizing dungeons and dragons and things like that so uh tell me tell us more about really the popularity of tabletop gaming and then we can get more into like how how you are utilizing it in creating community creating culture within teams and organizations yeah so when you think about um, you know, if we think about uh, millennials, um, which is one of the biggest buying, uh, you know, segments out there, we grew up with Harry Potter books, uh, and we grew up with the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, we grew up with this escapism of, of fantasy and these kind of other realms. And so it's part of our, our nostalgia and our identity. So when we see, um, you know, these games and stuff and Stranger Things, it also reminds us of freaks and geeks. And so all of all of the media that we've consumed uh, as younger has kind of led us to um, having an interest in these other. I mean, look how big Game of Thrones was, you know. And and so there's this interest in escapism. And of course, like the world is very is very bleak sometimes. And so escapism really helps you connect with people, um, in in through your imagination. Um, and so I feel a lot of, of the growth that we're seeing is um, people want something else to spend their leisure time on and they want to stay connected and they want to be with around people. And um, gaming is just one way to do that. It's awesome uh, to think about how we can connect with people and, and just, I'm not a big gamer myself. I never really have been, but you know, over the 4th of July weekend, I'm getting together, you know, this past weekend with all my family, extended family, uh, we're spending time together and gaming is a nice way to just connect with people. Um, and in, in some ways it lowers the stakes too, when you're with in-laws and, and other family members that maybe you don't interact with that much. Maybe it can be a little awkward at times, um, in terms of just spending time together, hanging out and whatever, but you, you start playing a game and you just, you're laughing, you're having fun, you're interacting in in genuine and authentic ways without it feeling strained. Right. Uh, and, and all of that, you know, it, so in that sense, maybe, you know, even think of it as like a social lubricant of, of sorts. Um, and, and it really can help facilitate, you know, just good connection. And, and I, I love that aspect of games. And so, I'm still, I'll probably never be, you know, like a a big avid gamer, like many of the gaming hobbyists uh, that are out there, but I totally recognize the value of it. And I do enjoy playing um, with people, especially when, when I I see it as a way to, to form and, you know, forge those connections. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. You know, it's, it's, um, we see a lot of uh, very interesting things happen because we do a lot of corporate gaming Um, and companies will like, hire us like hey we got a team of 50 people we'd love to do you know an adventure um we'd love to do some sort of game and you know teams are looking for ways to connect remotely um because that's that's you know that we live in a remote workplace now um and so that's one of the things we do and when we get these teams together um a lot of these people have never played a tabletop game they've never played dungeons and dragons or anything like that so it's the first time um but they're able to kind of get away from work, but they're still with the same, but they're still with their peers. And there is something that when you're playing this game, this game is like a two hour to three hour game usually, but it's all 
decided by the people playing. So you're going to use your imagination with your coworkers. And what we're noticing is they leave that game with so much to talk about between each other. Um, and, and what I've kind of researched, like what's really good for team activities is when you can create inside jokes and memories that people reference. That's kind of like, that's the chef kiss of, of team building events. Um, and like, you know, like, fun things to do is if an inside joke is created and people reference it, that means that it was successful. And and that's the number one thing that comes out of these type of games. Yeah. The, the enduring connections <laughs> that, that, yeah. uh, that last beyond the day that you're playing and, and you reference it um, weeks, months, even years later. And, you know, that's again, coming back to family, I know we're, you're talking about corporate, um, but coming back to family, you know, that's, that's when you're taught, when you're gathering around with your family and your, your siblings, you know, years later and, and reminiscing on <laughs> the weird yeah, yeah. things that you did <laughs> uh, <laughs> when you were teenagers or, or whatever. And, and really this, that same or a similar dynamic can emerge in a really tight knit team uh, in the mm-hmm. workplace. And as you g- learn to, to trust each other, um, as you learn to develop authentic relationships with each other, as you learn, you know, th- that you actually want to like be around members of your team at work, spend time with them. And it doesn't necessarily even mean, you know, depending on your life stage, you may or may not have time outside of work to get together. You know, maybe you don't have time or the ability to go grab a drink after work or to do those sorts of things. But when you can have those connections where you get up in the morning and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not only, you know, happy to, to show up to work today, but I'm excited to see this person and this person. I'm excited to work with them and collaborate with them and and such. And you You always need a best friend at work. You yes. always need a best friend at work. Yeah, you have a best friend at work. You have people that you can you can lean on, people that you can encourage, and they can encourage you. And so much of that can happen through the cooperative gaming, through um, through just the state of play, and the the the, gen- the other aspect that you've mentioned a couple times already is just the generating of creativity. Um, those juices get flowing, you, and then that enables you to to unlock different parts of your brain, so that when you go back to work you you are more innovative and creative and you can hit your flow state and just be more productive and so sometimes people think well man why are you you wasting an hour of like doing this team gaming activity why you know that's you know say you have five six people on your team that's six hours opportunity cost you know lost time productivity like well maybe but more likely is that it'll be that investment in time is well worth uh, well worth it because it's going to, uh, or if it's done correctly, it's, if it's done well, it's going to produce better uh, integration and, and synthesis and creativity and all those sorts of things that it's, it's hard to, to measure, um, but you, you know it when you see it. And, and ultimately, that's far more important than you yeah. know, a, a few hours here and there. The, do you know that there's this, um, there's this thing when we watch things on on television uh or movies or things like that that our body our brain thinks it's happening to us that's why like we get scared when we watch horror movies right um so our brain when anything is consumed we think it's happening to us um so um but also when you play games um it's a little bit different because it's not passive right it's interactive you you are engaging in it um and the other thing is When you are engaging with it, um, you are also generating uh, new experiences. And when it's something like these games where you have to like pretend like, hey, we're out in like the enchanted forest trying to find the, you know, the evil wizard, right? That that right there is such a wholly new experience that a lot of people don't have that when you're sharing that with the team, friends, family, whatever, it is highly memorable because you don't have those memories. You don't have things like that. So you're generating this. And that is like some of the most important and like kind of positive things for a person because the more new experiences we have, the not only younger we feel, but we also create more connections through that. Yeah. And again, those connections are, are what bind and, and keep teams tightly knit and working well together. And, you know, I, I do a lot of work in the employee satisfaction, engagement, uh, and motivation space, a lot of research there. And there's a lot of things that, that motivate people that are salient drivers and, and can engage people or disengage people. And, you know, we have a variety of intrinsic and extrinsic factors that play into that. Most often we think about pay. We know that pay is important. You have to have adequate pay. Um, But more often than not, what really gets people energized and excited about going to work 
uh, research has shown, my own research, but lots of other people's research as well has shown over and over and over again, that it's about the relationships of the people that you work with. You could work in a really a pretty crummy company, um, not even, you know, maybe making even a little bit below market. Um, the culture's not terribly healthy. Like you, you could list off a, ho a whole bunch of fairly negative things. Yeah. But if, if your boss is awesome and you love your boss and you have good people on your team that you love working with, that essentially creates an insulated bubble <laughs> around you yeah. and your experience at work. And all of a sudden, even with all the other tumult happening outside of your team uh, and in the, the, the politics and the strife and the, the, the frustrations and stuff, you're more or less, you can be insulated from that if you have a good yeah. team. Um, and so, you know, the, the value of that now, certainly we want to have healthy organizations with healthy cultures yeah. and we, you know, all of that, we want that as well. But what I'm saying is, hopefully I think people can see this as empowering um, yeah. that if, if you're a manager of a team, it, you still have a sphere of influence that you have yeah. quite a bit of control over. You can create the environment for your team um, even within, you know, a broader environment that may or may not be as positive or healthy as you'd want it to be. And so let's right. take ownership over our sphere of influence and let's make it the best it can possibly be. And this is one way to really enhance that, to really create a better environment. And, and it, it could be something as simple as, you know, you can have workshops and you can have retreats and you can do those sorts of things, but you can also just have like a lunch hour, yeah. you know, game time, you know, <laughs> bring your lunch, let's play for an hour. And people should be taking a lunch time anyways. If they're not, yeah. that's oh, another a problem. thousand percent. Yeah. And you, you know, you know, it's interesting. Like if you think about when you ask people about previous places they worked, right. Um, I, 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 I can't remember anyone that's ever said, it was wonderful. They paid me so much. Um, I, I don't really hear that. We like, and it, it could be just for the fact that we're Americans. And we don't really talk about wages that much, but I feel that the number one thing I always hear from people, if they had a great experience where they worked was the people were great. Um, I really hear, oh, the mentorship was awesome. Awesome. The, the, the internal education tools were incredible. Um, uh, it was, it was first, the team was great. The people were amazing. That's why I liked working there. And then the next thing is I learned a lot, which meant like, oh, it wasn't a great place, but I learned what I don't want out of a workplace. And, and that, those are the big things that I always hear that are, are kind of big indicators um, of what a workplace was like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I agree. That's consistent with my personal experience when I talk to other people, as well as the research that I've done. Um, tell us more about your platform um, and how it has impacted users over time and how it can be utilized. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like the, 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 the companies that come in and game with us now, you know, we have a lot that are doing this every month now as like a, a team game. And um, it's great because they're, they're essentially getting to write their own stories and their own adventures and um, it's so exciting to see how exciting they are every, every week. But um, on a larger scale, we are hearing these um, people, you know, they, they come as individuals looking for a game and they come and they use our service and we have our host, our game masters, our dungeon masters that they end up joining a game with. And they, and they join a game with a bunch of other people that are, are joining solo. Um, but within a few weeks, that group are, are fast friends. And then, you know, after a year, we're hearing stories of like, oh, yeah, I went to, you know, this one other player's wedding because all these games are online. So these people are creating these intense friendships and they're now, you know, sending each other Christmas presents, going to each other's weddings. Um, you know, we're hearing about uh, these a group of fifth grade girls that that they play a game every other week on the, on the site with a, a game master, um, a dungeon master Katie. And we heard that all those girls, their moms now do a monthly game on the site um and it's like the mom in in uh in wine dnd &D night um and all these people finding ways that they want to get together they want to spend time and they want to connect and and this is one of those things that makes it fun it makes it memorable and, and doesn't kind of give you this huge zoom fatigue yeah and and that zoom fatigue is real and so we need to be, be careful about it and you, you've already mentioned you know in relation to zoom you've mentioned how this can be utilized both in, you know, a, a in-person workplace, but a virtual uh, remote work uh, environment, hybrid environment, when you have distributed teams all over the place, um, you know, this, this is a way that you can connect people. And so I, I think all of that is 
fantastic as we think about the future of work, the future of distributed teams, remote and hybrid teams, uh, and those sorts of things. Do it in a way that that uh, is more engaging, more interactive. Like you said, it sucks you in. It's not passive, right? It's yeah, it's yeah. active. You're actively involved and engaged, and that's the bread and butter. I mean, that's when when you know I'm in the training and development space, and yeah. the use of gaming in the training and development space is huge because if 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 I'm just like standing up in front of a room of, of you know this passive audience of corporate you know executives or whatever, it's pretty much a wasted time (laughs) like yeah you you might get some things across and and they may you know be impressed by you and you maybe you'll say some interesting things and maybe they'll remember some things but that's that kind of a passive environment usually has almost no lasting effect um Mm -hmm. but rather when you when you engage people when you actively involve them in gaming like you're describing this is one form of how you can do that uh it can have a tremendous effect so uh that's fantastic well, Devin, I'm noting the time. Uh, this has been a, just a fun conversation. We have a few minutes left together. Before we wrap up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, how they can connect with your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, again, thank you for having me. It's such, a, it's such an honor uh, to, to be chatting with you. Um, you know, our, our team, we take about how we work very seriously and like radical transparency, vulnerability. And so a lot of the stuff that you've talked about in, in, in the, you've engaged with, you know, um, so it's, it's a pleasure to be here. So thank you again for having me. But if, if anyone out there, they want to continue to connect to find out more about me or, you know, start playing, you can find me on Twitter at Devin Chulik, uh, D-E-V-O-N-C-H-U-L-I-C-K. Just find me on Twitter. And uh, if you want to, if you want to find out about gaming for yourself, for your team, anything, you can just go to startplaying.games and you could book a, a game group or a game master. Um, and again, I think, you know, at the end of the day, everything is about community. Um, everything I, I want to do is community centric, um, whether it be, you know, the products I build, um, the people I work with, um, or in my current case, um, the products I build for the people I work with. Fantastic. Thank you, Devin. It has been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Devin and his team can do for you. Let's think about gaming and play and how we can incorporate that more into the workplace, more into our teams, more into our culture, because I think that will pay a lot of dividends and and just have a really tremendous impact. Uh, This has been a fun conversation. Thank you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe. That You can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.